Hello and welcome back to the new Reador server. Now, today I am actually settled in on my island and basically after the end of the last episode I decided to get organised because I realised that my last episode was really chaotic so I'm sorry guys. It was me gliding around in a boat, totally lost and then for the other half thinking maybe I'll make a map. So it's not how I like to do things, I like to have a bit of a plan. So straight after the episode, I decided to get myself organised and do a few bits of work. So let's just turn around and have a look what I've got. So over here, this is what I worked on. So don't don't tell me off for having done too much off camera. The, the reason that I did a lot of things off camera like this was because it takes some time for my um, my recordings to render. And then it also takes some time for them to upload. So in all of that time, I've got basically very little that I can do. So I decided to go absolutely ham and I got myself some villagers, check out those guys, doing really nicely. I got myself some crops going, doing very well. Let's see, is there anybody down there? Yeah, we've got some breeding down there going on. I found myself some pumpkins. I've been doing the pumpkin thing. I set myself a little auto sugarcane farm stuff up. Um, all of this is really basic stuff. This is just, let me just run around the back here. This is literally just a run of pistons with some redstone going over the top and the hopper clock at the back. And that is it. So nothing special. Now, this is maybe a little bit more special. I've been doing a little bit of trading and I've got myself some emeralds. So that is what I've been working on. I've got my map there. I've got my nether portal that goes right back to spawn all the way over there. Let's get that up. So I've got a good run all the way back there that is all of the good news oh yeah and there's this as well which is my mine shaft and this is my lovely cyan bed because i liked cyan and check out that bounciness just like the slime blocks now in fact that's probably only half of the good news <laughs> so this is this is an absolutely awesome pick of a place i decided to go down and start looking for some more diamonds get organized down there get some cobble and whatever whatever but i got down there and i saw a slime he was just stood there hanging around like hi i'm here so there is a slime chunk down there right underneath my base like right here somewhere down below and that is absolutely awesome i'm really <laughs> i'm just so pleased with this pick i've got my villagers i've got some slime i've got a little auto farm running this is just my startup kit guys it is going to be much better i'll best say hi hello now <laughs> I've got so much going on. Oh, they were leaving. Oh. <laughs> uh, not paying attention. Not paying attention. So anyway, I've got a lot of stuff done. And I'm really pleased. Now, that's all the good news. Now, the bad news is I actually died. I did die. Um, I can't remember what happened now because there was a few deaths after that. And I was very sad about it. I think I was down there doing some stuff and a skeleton jumped out on me. Now one thing that I didn't realise was that we're actually playing in hard mode, I believe, as well. So I'm seeing skeletons and zombies like spawning in full armour. And I'm not I'm not joking. That is no joke. <laughs> day one. Literally day one. And we're getting all of the fully armoured up things going on. <laughs> so I've been I've, d I've been safe. I've done some safe things. So my nether portal just runs straight through to the hub, which is very, very basic at the moment. It's just basically one portal over at spawn, and then a few people have built out from there. So I've built out a little tunnel going all the way over there, and yeah, that's kind of where I am. So I've got two things that I want to do today. Now, the first one is going to involve villagers, and the second one is going to involve villagers as well. So the first thing that I want to do today is build up a complete auto farm because check this out, projectile protection, ugh, projectile protection four and an unbreaking three. That is one of the trades on one of my villagers. That is an absolutely awesome trade. Now at this stage, I think if I get a little auto farm going and get some trading happening, I could sell these chest plates for eight diamonds. Basically exactly the cost that it would cost to make the chest play itself. But it comes pre-enchanted with an unbreaking three and protect projectile protection four. So that's sort of part of the plan. So I'm going to build up a little auto farm. You'll have seen me do it hundreds of times before. 
it's just the kind of basically i'll talk you through it as we go i'll show you as, as i go sort of halfway point and then full waypoint very simple auto farm now the other thing that i want to do today that involves villagers is i want to make a start on my iron farm now my plan is with the iron farming i want to start off with a single village iron farm and i think that can go i think if i go over here a little bit hi see that one nearly got me once nearly took my life whoa <laughs> Hey, am I missing something that's going on here? No. <laughs> I guess it's just me confusing things. So, maybe I'll go out there, actually, directly up from that island. Maybe that's the thing. Because that's not too far from my breeder. And if I go two stacks up, then I'm very clear of that. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That is going to be my iron place, and I can organize things around there that i want so that's the idea i'm going to build a single village iron farm way up there but the plan is that it's not just going to stay a single village iron farm it's going to turn into a 14 village iron farm and then finally in its final form or maybe its final form i'm not making any promises a 64 village iron farm now if i feel so inclined later on in the series once I've got a little bit more established and things are underway, I might even, I might upgrade it to 128. Just for the full overkill effect. But for now, I just want to build a 64 village iron farm up above there. But that's going to take time. That's going to be a number of episodes. Today, I'm going to try and get a single village iron farm up there and going. And for now, I'm going to sleep. And then when we come back, I will be starting on that build. Go. No, it's not night. Come on. Okay, and we're back. So, this is what I've got so far. This is the design which I've done dozens of times before. Well, I say dozens. I've done it plenty. I have done it absolutely plenty. It always works absolutely fine. And th I think the thing is, I hadn't quite reckoned on a particular thing. So, most of this design requires that you get the light levels down to seven in a particular area. Okay? So that means that you've got to control the lighting, get the light levels down. So when the villager plants something, it pops off. And that's the whole plan, that the item pops off when the light levels are seven. Okay, so now, can you see any light levels on that screen? <laughs> uh, this is not just coords hidden. This is all sorts of things hidden. Um, I can't see the light levels. So what I'm going to have to do, I mean, it, I don't think it's on there anywhere. I'm getting pretty good FPS. This is quite amazing. Is there anything going on? Uh, I guess, it, yeah, it goes down when I start looking at that. Yeah, look at the villagers. Not too bad. Look at the ground. Fine. Um, but I need to do some experimentation to find out at what light level the items pop off. So I'm going to have to build a big roof above this thing and then just do some tests see ya and we'll see what happens so i'll be back in a bit right so i've built this up a little bit i've put a few walls around the place and i did have glass here but as you can see big creeper hole groover of full hearts we'll we'll leave the rest to guesswork <laughs> ninja creeper completely i jumped out my chair you won't believe but anyway, I've done some work. I've built a little roof out there and that's going to stop the daylight coming through here. I've moved these um, torches away. So this is what I've got so far. Now that one pops off every time. So when it gets an update next to it, it pops off. Now what I want to... I want it to be bigger than one block is basically what I'm thinking. And the reason I want it to be bigger than one block is because the guy comes here, he plants one, then he goes, oh, there's another one which has got nothing on right there. And then they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, just breaking those two. And then he empties his inventory. I get lost potatoes and I'm very happy. So I need to work out why the light level on this one block is different to the ones around it. So what have I got? One, two, three. And then four. So that's in line with the carpet. That's in line with the carpet. So to my thinking, that one should also be dark. 
So, let's see. Have I lined that up properly? Um, that's three on that side, three on that side. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Um, but maybe just doing that's going to make the difference. Where's, where's my good tools? Why am I using... I can't break that with a hoe. Right. Here we go. So, what I'm expecting now is that when I put something there, this one should pop off. But it doesn't. What have I forgotten about the light levels? Yeah, it is just that one at the moment. Now, why isn't it going any lower? Um, let's just try it like that. And just put one in there. Nope, that's not made a difference. I think I'm going to have to extend that roof out just by another layer. Or maybe just round the corners a little bit. Because at the moment, that's just on a straight diagonal. What was that? Was that an in-game noise? I don't know what that was. Anyway, I'm going to do a little bit more experimenting with the roof. And just see if I can get this to two blocks next to each other. Preferably these two blocks. Or these two blocks. I don't mind. It could be four blocks. I don't really mind. As long as I get more than one block that does this. Okay, back in a moment. Right, so I extended the roof out just a little bit further over there. And that was just all the way around there. Now, as you can see here, both of those pop off, which is great. But that pops off and that pops off as well. Pretty sure that one doesn't. Oh, it does. Okay. I need to deal with this. I need to trim off that line at the front, I think. And then we shall see. Right, so I've actually got it to a position that I'm really happy with. So as you can see, they put down there, that's fine, that works. And then they put down there, and that's fine, and that works. So I know that these two blocks are now at seven. And I'm just going to plant a row. Oh, no, <laughs> I could eat something. If I eat something, then I won't be getting distracted when I'm planting my potatoes. Let's have some mutton instead. It's like an Irish stew. Potatoes and mutton. Okay, I'm going to plant a row like this here. Now, nothing's popped off. That means that I think all of the rest of the light levels are absolutely fine. Yes, I'm absolutely convinced of that now. Perfect. Really pleased. Now, the next thing is for me to finish this up. Which means taking out these two blocks, and I need to get a hopper minecart in here on a little line of a line of hoppers going out there. So let's see. I think I need to go sleep or something. Okay, let's get that set up, and we'll be back, and then I'll show you it in full action. I'll even get a villager in there real quick. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you how I'm going to get this minecart down in there. Now, let's just switch that round, get a rail on hand, get the minecart in there. It's a real shame, it's facing the wrong way, but that doesn't matter that much. I'm just going to break that, and then, if I can, yeah, just nudge it like that. So it's sitting over those two blocks and on top of that hopper. Now, I've got a couple of pieces of dirt. Let's just put them there and there, and then piston like that what else do I have I can just use that that's fine right here we go so that's gonna push that into there let's break that repeat it grab our stuff back up whoops that's already gone I'll show you how this works in a moment um, what can I get rid of I can get rid of that I don't need that on my hotbar anymore let's just put that in there piston oh my goodness I hate having a messy hotbar Ugh, where is my piston, guys? There it is. There it is. Right. Piston in there like that. Redstone. Break it. Break it. Get all my stuff back. Right. So, let's just till this soil very quickly. Get a potato. I'm going to place one there, one there. They both pop off. They get collected straight away by the hopper minecart. So this guy is going to be wandering around in here. He's always going to see this as being empty. And he's always going to come back here and try and fill it. But try as he might, they're always going to be popping off and getting collected up. 
even if they don't get collected up he's going to collect them then he's going to try and replant them cycle repeats and the really great thing with this is you don't have to clear their inventory you just take them as they are place them in there this is the brown coat villager by the way didn't explain that properly but the brown coat villager you just pop him in here and away he goes he'll do the job so i'm going to fill all of this up with potatoes for him get a brown coat in here just drop him in and let him get on with the work and once he's getting on with stuff i am going to go and start work on the iron farm right there we go i've got him in there a little bit of mess made in the villager breeder area there um, but nothing that can't be sorted out and anyway this is just a temporary structure this needs to move and stuff needs to be done basically yeah all of this is a bit of a mess right now but stuff needs to be done i'm just going to grab that up and replace the block on the front and hopefully we'll be able to see him doing his job properly let's see has he got anything to no he hasn't got anything to actually pick up at the moment so I'm just going to leave him in there and then I'm going to go start work on the iron farm. So I'm going to get a few things organised and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I actually decided to build the iron farm right here um, because I had a look over on the island there. I went over and had a quick look and I could just see possibly somebody else's stuff over there and I thought, no, I don't want to build this within sight of anybody else. So I'm going to build it right here on my little lump of land. And let's see, I need to get these in my offhand. Get those in my... Oh, no, not like that. <laughs> oh, goodness. I still haven't got the hang of this dual-wielding stuff yet. Um, so, like this. Yeah. That's the one. I think the problem is with this. You actually end up placing loads of blocks behind you as well. Yeah. So, like that, down there. Okay, so I'm actually going to go up a stack and a half of blocks because the villager breed is going to move and in the initial stages of this build, it's not going to interfere, so it doesn't matter. So let's just get up there and get sorted. Okay, so I'm all the way up here now and I really want to lay out the basic outline of this iron farm. Now, this isn't going to be exactly like anything else that I've sort of designed before um, because the plan is to build first a single iron, a single village iron farm just here, real simple thing, and then convert it to a 14 and then to a 64. So the initial plan is just to get myself rolling with some iron and we'll just get it to drop straight down there and I'll have a real simple collection system at the bottom. But for now, let's get this started. So, I'm going to build out the framework and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, so this is the catch tray started and I've worked out which way north is. Now, even though you'll see in the upper left-hand corner there on my F3 screen, there's not much information, there is still a relative chunk number, okay? So, if I stand here, you'll see that the first coordinate... <laughs> Let's see. The first coordinate, the 6, goes to 5, which means that's going negative. And that means that's either north or west. So then if I stand here and go in this direction, the last number there goes from 0 to 1, which means it's counting upwards, which means that that must be south, and therefore that must be north. So I've found my northerly direction. I can also check that with the sun. So it's setting in the west, rises in the east, therefore that's north. So I'm, I'm happy with that. The reason I need to know the direction is because when I make this a bit bigger, that's going to be really important. I need to get things in the right places. And if I get things in the wrong orientation, this will not work. It will not work at all. So anyway, I'm just going to carry on building this up. I just thought I'd tell you a little bit about what I'm doing there. And we're back in a moment. Okay, guys. So that is the bulk of the iron farm built. Um... Now, this isn't exactly like any of the farms that I've built before, but I've got reasons for that, but, you know, we'll talk about that later. But for now, everything's in place. All that I need to do is get some villagers up here and think about how I'm going to collect up this iron in the middle and get them to drop down and where they're going to drop to and all that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do now is just get the villagers in place and get that organised and then I'm going to organize this drop shoot here real quick. Just a straightforward drop down. 
somewhere below. I'll catch them up. I'll have a think about how I want to decorate this later, this drop shoot area. But for now, I just want to get this functioning as a single village iron farm. So, let's get that one back. Nice and tidy. Right, let's go down and grab some villagers and get them up here and in position, wherever that might be. Okay, back in a bit. Okay guys, that is it, finally finished. Now, it took quite a while to get those villages up there and get everything finally organized and in place. So what I've done here is I've actually put 10 villages on one side and just one on the other, because it only needs one to register the doors on that side. And I wanted the 10 on this side so that when I eventually upgrade this farm, which won't be too long, once I've got enough iron together, I'm going to be upgrading this. Once I upgrade this farm, I don't need to move those villages. They're in place. And then after that, it's just adding villages all around the place. So, you know, a large chunk of the work's done. The rest of this is going to be adding the wings on and getting some resources together to actually build it out of. So, let's just pop up here. I built a real quick catch tray. Now, this is just to catch up any iron golems that fall just for now this is very quick and dirty but there we go you can see that i've had one iron golem with his poppy so i'm pretty pleased with that that's going to do the job for now i need to do a bit of afk in around here now a few of you might have noticed look at all these emeralds look at these lovely emeralds i've done a little bit of trading as you can tell whilst i've been sort of doing things and waiting for things to happen and all that kind of thing i did a bit of trading and i used up some of these potatoes because this was absolutely full and it's nearly full again so i think i need to move those away let's just quickly craft up a chest to put them in let's put you there <laughs> oh goodness this farm is just so fantastic it works so well you get so many resources from it it's ridiculous but Right, there we go. That's going to start helping us out. I best, I best make that into a double chest, hadn't I? Right, that to that. I should use this again, shouldn't I? So, how does this work? Where's my chest option? There's my chest. Take that. Lovely. I'm actually starting to get used to this menu thing on the left. And it's actually really quite good. So, I can shift click in and out and that's all of them crafted. That's my 10 new emerald blocks. I'm very pleased with that. So I'm going to do a little bit of AFK in around here, and I'm just going to see how much iron I get by the morning. Um, I should get around about 40 iron an hour, maybe a little bit more. I'm just hoping that I haven't made some kind of weird mistake that means that the center's off, but I don't think so. I'm pretty certain everything's correct there. Best say hello. Hello, Nox. Whoops. <laughs> Wrong keyboard. Let's change it. Like that. There we go. Right. So yeah, there we go guys. I'm just going to put these down here. I like to show off my wealth a little bit. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to start doing some trading pretty soon as well. I think by next episode you'll see what I'm going to be trading. Um, because I've got some things which I think are really worthwhile. So anyway guys, I just wanted to say... Whoa, hey, There we go. Let's see if we can catch Golem falling in the background. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. We made a lot of progress today. So I'm sorry for all the jump cuts, but I really wanted to get to a stage where, you know, we're getting advanced and we're getting into a decent stride of the game. And then I can start tidying up this area. Once I've got these iron golems falling properly, then we can start working on this area properly. Start getting it into order. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do leave a like. And if you want to see some more, drop me a subscribe. And I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.